On today's show, a party all about a bug with big responsibilities. Shotgunners get together in honor of Minnesota soldiers. And a nanny for those of you who love getting kids outdoors. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. You know, typically a lot of us try and avoid bugs. Little things like ticks and mosquitoes, those little creepy crawlies. <laughs> but there's one prehistoric fly that's having a big party thrown in its honor, and for good reason too. <laughs> Oh, they are amazing. When a lot of people show up for a party being thrown in your honor, you know you must be special. There's all kinds of really cool things about it. First is they're big and they're beautiful. And a lot of times when people hear insect or bug, they get creeped out. A bash for a big insect? Now that's different. Dragonfly Festival is a chance just to get people out, learn more about dragonflies, and really kind of get up close and personal with them. For some people, it might be their first time holding a dragonfly. Of all the insects to honor, why dragonflies? Dragonflies are a really good gateway insect, kind of like butterflies, to say, hey, these things are actually really cool. The other reason that we want to highlight is they're a biotic indicator. So they can be used by scientists to indicate how healthy uh, an environment is. Dragonflies spend most of their lives underwater as baby nymphs, and so their life and their health is really tightly knit together with water quality. Do you want to hold the nymph? There he goes. So the better we understand dragonflies, the better we understand our waters and our lakes and our rivers and our streams a job they've had for millions of years. The first direct ancestors of dragonflies, the fossil evidence we've found is from 325 million years ago. That's before uh, reptiles were laying eggs on land. It's very prehistoric. This is the size that uh, our fossils indicate the first dragonflies or griffinflies were. Thankfully, today they are smaller, yet just as important. They are also predators. And so in their larva stage underwater, they're eating the larva of deer flies, horse flies, mosquitoes, all these things that we find aggravating. And then as adults, they're eating deer fly, horse flies, mosquitoes, all the things we find aggravating. Fewer mosquitoes and deer flies? This is a female. Hey, sign me up for this girl. festival. Yeah, too, yeah. You are correct, that is a female. We have a dragonfly tent where you can just kind of walk through the tent and we have it stocked full of dragonflies, almost like a butterfly tent. Dragonflies are flying all around you. Um, you can really look at them up close. They can go down to our ponds and they can look for baby dragonflies and baby damselflies, which are the cousins of dragonflies. So they can dip in there and try to catch them and look at them, as well as all the other creatures that live in the pond with the dragonflies. Ones that really I think people like to get out and do, they can run through our prairie and catch dragonflies and identify the different species that we have. How many species? Somewhere around 130 species in Minnesota, but that number is changing. Large parts of Minnesota, we have not documented dragonflies, and so we're constantly finding new dragonflies. Out of 130, we're bound to catch one species in the prairie. Get it! Get the darner! Aren't we? Wait, let it land, let it land, let it land! Whoa! Okay, there it is! <laughs> they are quick, I'll tell you that. You know, so, I've been hunting for a lot of things. I think this sounds like the most difficult species to hunt down, I'm gonna be honest. It, it's pretty tricky. <laughs> I think Does you might, work? oh, I, I, wait, I think you got stop. No, okay, oh. perfect, yep. All right, so this is a four-spotted skimmer because it's got four spots, uh, one spot on each wing. Miss Dragonfly, thanks for the fun. We're gonna release you back in the wild to eat those mosquitoes. Time to go. This festival is entertaining, but the main goal here is to educate. The best thing you can do is think about planting nat natives. If you have natives in your yard, I do that. It's great, I don't have to mow my yard. Uh, they do really well. One small thing to help protect an insect with a big job and an important one, keeping our planet healthy. 
coming up next outdoorsmen and women shoot for the troops. Find out what this fun of field is all about. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. By the Yard Maintenance Free Outdoor Furniture. Running Aces Casino Hotel and Racetrack. And by Aluma Craft Boats. Up next, a tale about people helping people. Shotgunners load up to shoot for the troops. Actions almost always speak louder than words. At a central Minnesota gun club, a helping hand comes from a bunch of folks. Today, they shoot for the troops. We're here to have fun. It's for a good cause. We're raising money for some military families. Shoot for the Troops is an organization that we formed uh, to help out current military members and their families that run into some hardships, uh, financial hardships because of being away from home, uh, being deployed. We also are here to help veterans. The champions. No, we don't know. <laughs> the hopeful. The survivors. How's that? Teams show up in Little Falls to shoot sporting clays. No, we're, we're not luck. It's not luck. It's all skill. Adults and kids. I'm just going to cheer them on. Good job. Yeah. Money that will help soldiers and veterans and their families fix broken water heaters or maybe a family car that suddenly breaks down. Hey. since 2004 we've done close to 1700 grants and a total of about 3.8 million dollars worth of grants well i think they sacrifice more than anybody else in uh, society um, they leave their families they leave their homes and uh, they're there to protect and serve The shooters here are a variety of people. We have individuals, we have a lot of companies that uh, send out their employees. Uh, so we have a variety of people from all over the state of Minnesota. I love it. It's awesome to see this. So it still shows that, you know, after how many years, people still care about what we're doing, even though it's maybe not necessarily as much in the television, that they're still here supporting us and letting us have a good time and shoot, really. This dad understands more than most. He serves in the National Guard. I think for me, the family support is the biggest. Maybe I'm still on point for that fast one over there. You got half of them better than anybody else did. That's oh, pretty cool. I'm glad they could come out today, too. All they get to see is uh, typically me leaving Friday or Saturday morning in the uniform, so they can see a different side of the military. Boing. <laughs> oh, yeah, is it? That's his response for everything. Boing. <laughs> Boing. How's school today? Boring. Sergeant Nick Berglund shoots here for the first time. Super interesting. I didn't know about it till this year. Uh, I worked out at camp for a few years and just found out about it. So it's a, it's a good event out here. It's fun. And they see what we get to do and we get to see what they do and see who wants to contribute to you know, make our lives better and we appreciate it. So. Shooters never hit all targets. Even so, this event is right on the mark. It is. I mean, this is our way of thanking the veterans, uh, thanking the active military folks for their sacrifice they make for all of us. How about this? You be able to use that. Coming up next, outdoor art through the eyes of the kids. This is the work of the Art Nanny. Closed captioning is brought to you by Maple Grove Lock and Safe, your premier Liberty safe dealer. to meet a nanny who has taken outdoor art to heart. My dad, Ron Shera, walked the trails with Chelsea Baugh. Alumacraft presents Kids in the Outdoors. Chelsea, 
to add some fish? How do you make a fish? It was Pablo Picasso who said, every child is an artist. But these kid creations won't hang in any art gallery. These guys are big. This art is, shall we say, very natural. This idea, kids and nature art, belongs to Chelsea Ba. Oh yeah, look at that. A full-time nanny and lover of all things kids and the outdoors. Chelsea and the kids look for artistic inspiration along the trails at Westwood Hills Nature Center in St. Louis Park. Is this the goal? Something Chelsea calls nature play. See this rock, it's not very heavy. There's so much sensory input that they can get from nature, but at the same time, it's calming. Along the trail, sometimes right at their feet, kids find nature-made art supplies. How about this? You might be able to use that. So you guys think we should do a mermaid? Yeah. How do you do it? This color here, or this color here? Um, I mostly use bark, sticks, pine needles, acorns, acorn caps, seeds, that kind of stuff. Out of that stuff, dozens of creations soon line the trail. And their art gets great reviews. It looks like a squirrel. Picasso would be proud. It's been very fun to see them all along the trail and especially when you're hiking with a group of kids and they get very excited about them. You just go down the street to the park. It doesn't have to be deep in the woods. It can be, you can find nature on the sidewalk. On your next walk through the woods, open your artistic eye. You just might see a masterpiece. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Lisa Erickson and today I'm going to teach you how to make campfire hobos in the oven. We're going to do uh, two pieces of tin foil and I've alternated them and I like to use the heavyweight tin foil. We've got some hamburger, some great green giant red potatoes and some Klondike gold potatoes and some onions and carrots. Each time I make the campfire hobos, I like to mix it up with a new or interesting vegetable. Today I chose peas. Let's get started. We're going to take a patty and put it on the bottom of the tin foil. And I've got a little bit of seasoned salt, or you can just use salt and pepper. And I'm just going to sprinkle that right on top. And I'm going to take some onion, break it up right over the top. And now I'm going to bring my tin foil up a little bit and contain it because I want to stack everything one on top of each other. Next, we'll put the potatoes on top. And don't forget to add a little more seasoning as you go along. And now we're going to put some carrots on there and our special vegetable we chose. And my secret ingredient, which makes a nice gravy on top, is cream of mushroom soup. I'm just going to take and scoop it right on top. Then we're going to take and fold it up. But the secret is to remember Especially if you're grilling on the campfire or on the grill outside is to make a handle so you can move it around and turn it. All right, they've been baking in the oven for an hour and a half at 350. Let's check them to see if they're done. Did you notice that I didn't use any dishes in preparing this meal? And now I'm just going to use a little paper plate uh, support and look, it's perfectly done. And the tin foil acts as a plate. And that is Campfire Hobos done in the oven. And that's my wild chow. Still ahead, a Minnesota-bound classic all about Northwoods jewelry picked from one of our state's biggest lakes. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Kinetico, Adams Pest Control, Rave Sports, 
your local carrier dealer. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us both back in time and up to Leech Lake. Where a real rarity washes up on the beaches. Head north and eventually you'll run into Walker, Minnesota, a town known for all the outdoor stuff Minnesotans love. Most folks come up here for the big lake named Leech. It's the fishing. There's waves, that's good. But something else calls Brandy Wrigley to these waters. <laughs> On a gray day, she searches for color. I try every day, unless it's really bad. Walk along the beach, pick up glass. Tiny. Brandy, who lives right along the lake, spends days walking her beach. You can walk down one way and not see anything and then walk back the same way and then you see pieces. It's weird. She picks small pieces of Leech Lake history. The green one's great. It's a piece of pottery, a plate bits of glass and stone with a story. All of these came out of our backyard, yeah. Much of the glass dates back to the early 1900s, a time when bottles somehow ended up in Leech Lake. People just buried their garbage. I mean, or threw it in the lake. That same glass, massaged and cured by water and time, now piles up in Brandy's studio. Here's like just a little bit of it. This is one drawer, just a little bit. Brandy found a need to recycle. I tried to organize it and it didn't get very far. Her answer, <laughs> jewels. The longer I do it, the better I get, which is with everything. Brandy makes jewelry out of the old lake glass. Every day in the summer, I make jewelry. And every day in November and December, I make jewelry because it's Christmas. She creates one tiny bead at a time. So one thing, I have really short fingernails because I can't do beadwork if I have long fingernails. When she's not looking along Leech, another of Minnesota's lakes hands Brandy glass. I can find it on Lake Superior. I go to the North Shore and can find it. A lot of people look for rocks there. I look for glass. <laughs> glass that will eventually become jewelry. I sit out here in the summertime. Often, Brandy loses her shoes and works along the beach. It may be the way she connects to the water. It's really fun to be able to create something that people like, you know, want to wear. Almost done. It'll go with anything. Maybe not pink. <laughs> For Brandy, it's all about the colors. This is one of the rarest colors that we get in the lake. It's kind of an indigo blue. Brandy Ringley found a way to take history and make it a Minnesota jewel. I think that it's great that you can find a purpose for something instead of putting it in a landfill. Such cool jewelry. You know, she's actually still making her jewelry and you'll be able to find it at the Minnesota Bound Log Cabin at the State Fair. Fun for all of us. Well, that about does it for us this week. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook. 